We begin with the war in Gaza, where Israel is pressing on with its offensive in the territory south after rejecting calls from the United States to scale back. In a televised address, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said that Israel would not stop fighting in Gaza until it has destroyed Hamas, which is considered a terrorist group by Israel and the U.S. Now, Netanyahu also rejected calls by the U.S. to facilitate a post-war Palestinian state. As the fighting in Gaza rages on, Israel's increasingly at odds with its closest ally. The war in Gaza is still backed by the United States, but the intensity of operations has come under U.S. scrutiny. Israel says it won't cave to American pressure. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu stresses Israel won't scale back and appear to reject the idea of creating a Palestinian state. In any arrangement, whether there is an accord or not, the Israeli state must have security control over all the territory west of the Jordan River. It's a necessary condition. But that clashes with the principle of Palestinian sovereignty. So what can I say? I've told our American friends this truth. I've also stopped the attempt to impose a reality on us that would harm Israel's security. An Israeli prime minister should be able to say no, even to our best friends. No when necessary, yes when possible. But the U.S. has reiterated Palestinian statehood is the only path to lasting peace. We do believe that this conflict, as all conflicts do, will end at some point and that there needs to be a political path forward for the establishment of a Palestinian state. That is the only way not just to answer the legitimate hopes, dreams, aspirations of the Palestinian people, but it is also, and this is critical, the only way to provide lasting security for the Israeli people. And it's not just the U.S. trying to push the Israeli government in a different direction. In Tel Aviv, protesters accused the government of pursuing aggressive policies. What we ask for is a different politics, a politics that can bring both people who are living here, also the Jewish people and the Palestinian people, peace, liberty and security. Many fear an outright rejection of Palestinian statehood now will only worsen regional tensions and trap Israel in endless conflict. And let's get more from London with Yossi Meckelberg. He is with the Middle East and North Africa program at the Think Tank Chatham House. Welcome to the program and thank you for joining us. Uh, this seems to be the furthest that Netanyahu has gone in rejecting a two-state solution publicly. How much of this is him playing to his domestic audience and how much is he sending a message to, you know, allies and beyond abroad? It's a, it's a difficult question, a good question, but because Netanyahu flip-flops for many years according to political needs, mainly his own political needs to stay in power and, and survive in power. And if he senses that the mood in, in Israel is against the Palestinian state, that's exactly what what, what he says. When, for instance, he, he, he talked about annexation of parts of the, of the West Bank and then uh, it stopped the Abraham Accord, he stopped the idea of annexation and, and signed an agreement on uh, with, with the UAE in Bahrain or the Abraham Accord, the normalization with these countries. There, there are no principles in the case of Netanyahu anymore, and there are no strategy anymore with Netanyahu because he's facing a, a, a corruption trial, because he failed miserably to, to protect the people and defend the people of Israel on, on, on October 7. It's all about him staying in power. But, you know, he sends a message to the United States, and it's time for the United States to send the message back. And, and we've seen the U United States, they have steadily been ramping up pressure on Israel um, regarding how this war has been progressing and especially the, the human toll that it has taken. It appears as if the United States keeps getting brushed off, at least publicly. How much influence does Washington still have over Israeli policy, especially given the support that the U.S. is providing financially and otherwise? Yeah. I think actually the United States should take Netanyahu's advice. You just said the clip that you that you showed that good friends should sometimes say no uh, to, to a close friend, and that's exactly what they should say to Israel. No to veto a ceasefire in, 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 in the Security Council, no to support 
unconditionally war in Gaza that claimed more than, than, than 24,000 uh, lives, many of them uh, as civilians, uh, nor to support a government that is actually blocking a peace agreement that, as the spokesperson, uh, the State of, uh, Department spokesperson said, is the only way to guarantee long-term so then, security. I mean, that, 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 that's your own personal policy prescription for the United States. But, but ultimately, I mean, yeah. does the United States have that sort of influence over Israel? Do you think that it could get it to change tact? Of course it can. Yeah, it's my, my opinion. But at the same time, we know the kind of close relations between the United States and Israel and the leverage that the United States it's from day one, and not only from 7th of October, for long before, for decades, is a, a, the United States politically, diplomatically, economically, militarily supports Israel. It means it also has a leverage vis-a-vis uh, vis 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 Israel. At, the, at this point, not only Israel behaves in a way that, that harms uh, its own interests, it harms also American interests at the same <laughs> At certain point, the United States, the Biden administration, and I understand this election here, also to think about U.S. interests, regional interests, global interests, and also in this case, help Israel to look after its own interests, so, because we saw that it failed time and again. So then let's 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 broaden it out a little bit um, more into the region, because we've seen some Arab states working on a plan to bring the war to an end and a long-term solution. Um, the comments that we've heard from Netanyahu, what message does this send to them specifically? You see, if you want to broaden the question, and, and, and you're right, for too long, you know, the, the Israel and the Palestinians and the region and the international community tried to manage this conflict. They believed in this fallacy of status quo and this fell apart within a few hours on October 7 in the most horrific way. And since then, we, we see a war that has no end. When Netanyahu talks about destroying Hamas, we see that this is becoming an impossibility, not only politically and ideologically, but also, but, also, but, also, but also militarily. At the same time, we are not closer into bringing the hostages back while the war is expanding to other fronts, whether it's with Hezbollah in Lebanon, we see that now Iran and Pakistan, the Houthis in the Red Sea, and so on and so forth. It's actually bring to the surface a lot of the other conflicts in the region. That's why ceasefire is so important. And a UN security resolution, the only thing that blocks a resolution on ceasefire is actually the United States. Yossi Meckelberg, thank you so much uh, for joining us to share your view on the political situation in the region. We appreciate it. Thank you.